We didn't think it was possible, but the Jets made the impossible possible yesterday. They lost to a team that's trying to lose. Imagine how difficult that is to lose to a team that is trying to lose, that doesn't want to win. Now, the players want to win, but the organization doesn't want to win. They're tanking for Tua or whoever they love, and now they've fallen out of the first spot. They have the same record as the Jets. I just want to know one thing. I'd like to know one thing. How could this Jet team have beaten the Cowboys, who are playing the Giants tonight? How? How's it possible? The Jets are a joke. It's, un it's unacceptable what they did. It's unacceptable the product they put on the field yesterday, and they should be awfully glad that that game was played in Miami because at the end of the game, they were screaming fire gates to Jet fans that traveled down to South Florida. Imagine if that game, losing to the Dolphins, was at MetLife, there would have been a serenade of boos that you would not have believed. And the Jets would have deserved every single one of them. The, the, the organization is in free fall. The quarterback, who has a, a world of talent, is regressed to the point that you have to be concerned right now. I cannot believe what I just saw, to paraphrase the great Jack Buck. Well, to me, this is a coaching problem because, as you mentioned, this team beat Dallas. So... You could scream all you want. This is why McCagney got fired. They don't have a lot of talent. Well, they had enough talent to beat Dallas. They had enough talent to maybe beat Buffalo, who, by the way, at 6-2, and two, look like they're on their way to the playoffs, that if Sam was healthy because he was playing with Mono and they were close, they could have won that game too. So there is enough talent for them to be able to play. But where they really lack, I think, is in coaching. And here's an example where I think it's clearly coaching and clearly not the talent level. Did you see the opening drive? Yeah. Didn't it look very similar to the opening drive the previous week against Jacksonville? Those are the scripted plays. Right. That's when you, you work on it all week. Here's how we're going to do the first 15 plays, the first series. We're all going to get it down. Okay, coach, we got it. Go out. Everybody executes the game plan. March down the field. Score the touchdown. They did it against Jacksonville, and then they did it lot yesterday. But then once the game gets going, and the team counter punches. And then certain things aren't working anymore. And now you got to go and change the plays at the line of scrimmage or during the course of the game. Make adjustments at halftime. That's when this coaching staff seems completely lost. That Miami's able to counter. And then not only counter punch, but punch back, score, add to scores, turnovers, penalties. It's the same thing every week. But those first drives... First quarter, march down the field, look like a fine oiled machine. But once now you're left to your own devices when you couldn't script the plays out, and now you got a counter move and play that game of chess that you do in the NFL. Because unlike any other sport, no offense to hockey, basketball, or baseball, this is a coaching sport. It's making adjustments, putting people in the right position. Sure, you need talent. You need talent at every level in every sport. But once you have the talent, you've got to make that talent work for you, and it's about coaching. That's why Belichick can go win championships every year with different guys every year. And then Pittsburgh's able to be consistently good, no matter who the coach is, who they lose in free agency. But if you don't have the coach to make the adjustments and know what's going on during the course of the game, you have no shot. And that's what I've been seeing from this team all year long, a team that is being completely outcoached every single Sunday. I think you bring up a great point with a scripted drive. It's fine. Obviously, he has a great offensive mind, but he does not know how to adjust. They don't play well in the second half. They don't play well after the first drive. And another sign of coaching, and it's not just on him, it's on every coach. Ten more penalties yesterday, 105 yards. That's the difference between everybody and the Patriots. If you fumble the ball or if you commit a penalty, you simply don't play. That's it. It's easy. And the Jets keep making penalties. It goes back to Todd Bowles. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if there's a poison atmosphere in the Jet facility, but it's crazy that with a 1-7 start after eight games, the hue and cry right now is so loud to fire Todd Bowles. Uh, Adam Gase, it's so loud, and I, I, I'm not I'm not up for that. I'm just not. I don't know what that does. You can't keep changing coaches till you find one you like. Mom. And I, it has nothing to do with that. Well, they'd be paying three coaches. The Johnsons print money. They're the family that owns Johnson and Johnson. They were able to have a, a lawsuit where they they settled for billions. They didn't blink. So the fact that they have to pay Adam Gase, Todd Bowles, and the coach they hired, that's not the point. The point is you cannot continue to make changes like that in football. But Football's different than every other sport. But that's fine, Michael. I get that, and I fundamentally agree with you. But if you've got the wrong guy there, what do you just continue to coach the wrong uh, guy? But, the, and then and every year goes by just so that you can say, well, we didn't fire another one after but, one year. Or 
for two years. But the guy who hired this guy would hire the next guy. Christopher Johnson well, but, hired but, this I, guy. I, I, but you just maybe you just hope that eventually you get it right. But when was the last time the Jets had a coach that actually had success after he was a Jet? Right. I mean, you go back to. To, to Bowles, who got a job as a coordinator with Tampa Bay. Rex fizzled in you know, Buffalo. Before that, and, and, and Mangini fizzled in Cleveland. Herm Edwards didn't do badly in Kansas City. But now, now we're going back over a decade ago. Yeah. You know, so to me, it's just finding the right people. And you just also hit the nail on the head, too, is that it's, it's an organization is run by people that don't know a lot about football. And the reason I can say that, and I'm not... I'm making fun of them. It's just a fact of life is because they had to go outside the organization to get Casserly and Wolf to go out and hire McCagnan and Bowles in the first place. So this is the problem when you don't have any football people involved in your organization. How's Chris Johnson supposed to pick the right coach? He's not a football guy. But that's the problem, Michael. They haven't been able to find the right combination of people to run their franchise. Yeah, but, but here's, here's what I would say to that. If you're not that great about cars, right? And you just don't know. And, and you can get any car you want. You just don't know what makes a great car. Then just buy buy the Mercedes. You know you're not going to go wrong. They had my McCarthy there. Instead, they took a chance on a guy that was fired within the division. Well, because they still have this whole, we don't want another Bill Parcells. You know, Bill Parcells came in here and he took over and he was going to be completely in charge. Right, how'd it work out? Well, you gave it to Gase. He's now completely in charge. And he's not nearly as good as a Parcells or a Mike McCarthy. I'm Mike McCarthy at least went to the playoffs, Peter. Nine of the 13 years he was in, in Green Bay. You could say, well, he had Favre and, and, and he had Rodgers. But at least he's a coach that went to the playoffs. He won a championship.